let me get this straight. DC decided to do a 2D anime movie about Catwoman that doesn't have Batman, and it's still great? What is this black magic? <laughs> like, seriously, like, I know this isn't DC's first foray into anime, I know, but this is the most interesting one, because, like I said, it doesn't have Batman in it, even though it takes place, obviously, in the Batman universe. It focuses on Catwoman, and it's very, very different from pretty much any other DC anime film that has come before it. And again, it's another one of those movies that's not part of the Tomorrowverse. It's another one of those weird one-offs. So, How does this one work this well? Well, I'll do my best to try to explain. But most of this is because of the voice acting. Let's dive in together. What's up? What's happening? It's going by Welcome back to the Anime Station, which is a fan of the Animation Queen TV movies as well. I'm your host, Jatson Small. Welcome to my review... For Catwoman Hunted. I don't really have much else to say beforehand. I kind of already explained this basic movie. So here's my review. I hope you enjoy. This is going to be a bit of a strange one to discuss. Not only because it's not a Tomorrowverse film. But it's also a full on DC anime film. Yes I know it's not the first time they've done it. As Batman Ninja came out a few years beforehand. Saving that review for when the sequel comes out, by the way. That's why it's not in this marathon. And, of course, most recently was Suicide Squad Isekai. That I still need to watch. But there's a few key differences here. The animation is traditional 2D rather than 3D. And it focuses on side characters rather than A-listers. Also, because it's, it's a Batman movie without Batman. Which is more than a bit odd. I went into it with expectations kind of in the middle, and came out surprisingly loving it. This is a unique, funny, sultry, sexy, stylish, and highly entertaining adventure. After attempting to steal the Cat's Eyes Emerald from a powerful female crime lord, Catwoman finds herself teaming up with Batwoman and Interpol to bring her to justice. In other words, she gets blackmailed into helping. Voice cast in this one is very stacked, so as always, the returning actors first. All two of them. Yeah, this has a very different cast than the usual DC fare. Kelly Hu is now Cheshire, and Steve Bloom's now uh, Grundy. That's it. Then everyone else here is new. Ron Yang? Yuang? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. From Mortal Kombat Legends 3 Snowblind, he voiced Sub-Zero in that movie. As Dr. Zin, Jacqueline... Obradors, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from NYPD Blue as Ladama, Andrew Kishino from Star Wars The Clone Wars and The Bad Batch as Mr. Yakuza, Kirby the Eighth from The Good Place, I forgot to list her character, I'm stupid, Jonathan Frakes from Star Trek Generations as King Faraday, Zera Fazal, Fazel from My Adventures with Superman as Tali Al Ghul, Lauren Cohen from The Walking Dead as Julia Pennyworth, and Jonathan Banks from Gremlins as Black Mask. And then there's three big stars in the entire lineup. Elizabeth Gillies, Gillis, I'm going to say Gillis because it sounds better. Jade West from Victorious is the new voice of Catwoman. Stephanie Beatrice, yes, Vaggy from Has Been Hotel, is the new voice of Batwoman. And finally, none other than Keith freaking David. Husk from Hasman Hotel, Goliath from Gargoyles, the Snail Translation Caller from SpongeBob SquarePants, Dr. Facilier from Princess and the Frog, Arbiter from Halo, Mr. Sims from Tales in the Hood 2, etc., etc., etc. He's Keith David. As Dana's main as Dana's main henchman, Tobias Whale. The voice acting is stellar in this one, but these three were the big highlights for me, especially Beatrice, who is a superb Batwoman. Like I like the Batwoman from the New 52. I do like that voice actress, but I don't know. Something about Stephanie's performance here actually fits this character a lot better. But as great as the voice acting is, I'd argue this film's biggest strength is its animation. Not only does it do a good job looking and feeling like an anime, 
but it also just has so much stylus visual flair of its own from the designs to the colors and even the subtle little details that really added to the background detail and immersed me throughout. Like the animation in this movie is excellent. Like sure. It's not DBS Broly. Nothing will ever be DBS Broly, but anime animation wise, this is still really dang good, especially for the early 2020s that this came out in. Then there's the great characters, fun action, jazzy, enjoyable soundtrack, fast pacing, brisk runtime of barely an hour. Th this is one of the shortest movies out of this entire filmography. A few surprising twists, a wild finale with a twist that you will not see coming, and pretty high rewatchability. Honestly, this movie's only problems are the basic run-of-the-mill story that we've probably seen a dozen times before in other movies. And the final few minutes feeling a bit tacked on rather than flowing naturally. Like, it feels like everything is wrapping up and everything is concluded, and then the final ten minutes happens, and it's like, oh, it's still going? Okay. Sure. Why not? But honestly, they're not all that damaging to the overall experience, because it's just so much fun. Overall, while I can't say it's among my favorite anime films or favorite DC animated films, I can definitely still recommend it to fans of the feline anti-hero. If you love Catwoman, you're gonna love this film. Give it a try. And if it doesn't end up being your thing, that's perfectly okay. Final verdict for this movie for me is going to be a high, stylish, jazzy 9 out of 10. Check this movie out if you haven't already. Don't let the whole anime aesthetic thing scare you away. It is great. It's worth your time. It's just weird. Weird and basic. Well, that's it. Uh, see, I would say see you next time for the next DC animated film, but uh, um, mm, we have some unfinished business we have to take care of, and it's going to be the last review for the day because it is going to take all my energy because it's probably one of the most negative reviews you will ever see from me on this channel. But I have to talk about it. There's no dodging around it. If I don't talk about it now, then I'm going to have to talk about it later. See you next time for my suffering through Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Pray for my sanity. We cannot take it anymore. The time is coming. We're ready for.